Every Friday, Anna and Bob will select one activity out of four possible for that evening, play, movie, dancing, or dinner. So one of the four. Each person will list two acceptable activities and one vetoed activity that they do not want to engage in. So essentially what I'm seeing over here, and by the way, I don't even have to make this as of now, but this is what I'm visualizing, that there are two lists coming up. Each person, one A's list and one Anna and Bob's list. So there are two activities that each one of them has listed, you know, is acceptable and one that they have vetoed that this is not something we're going to do at all. Yeah. So, for example, Anna could, you know, pick a play and a movie here and maybe she could, she vetoed dinner and then Bob picked, let's say, dinner and movie and vetoed uh, dancing, whatever. So something like this is possible, right? Now, then they will compare their lists and select what to do according to the following rules. Now, these are the rules. Now, they often some criteria or rules are given in these kind of questions. So, if both their acceptable activities match, so if this also matches and this also matches, then both of these are same, right? They have both the same activities. Then uh, Anna selects one of the two activities as per her wish. So then Anna, let's say Anna selected play and movie and Bob also selected movie and play, play and movie. Then she'll select whether to go for the play or for the movie. Then if two are common, then Anna selects. If only one of their acceptable activities match, let's say play and movie and here, uh, you know, uh, dinner and movie, if only one matches, then they select that activity to do. That's a no-brainer. Of course, if one matches, then they'll have to do that activity only. Just makes sense. Mm. If neither of their acceptable activities match, let's say there's play, movie here and dinner and dancing over here. Yeah. Then they select Bob's acceptable activity that is not vetoed by Anna. So now, look, you know, Anna has two activities. Let's go, let's say those are play and movie. You know, I think I'll just write it a little more clearly so that there is no confusion. Currently, there is a whole lot of confusion. So let's say Anna has two activities that she has agreed to. That is play and that is a movie. And Bob says that nothing should match here. So Bob says that either dinner is okay or dancing is okay. Let's say Anna has vetoed something. Of course, there are only four activities. Two are acceptable. The other two are acceptable to Bob. Now Anna has vetoed something that vetoed has to be one of the Bob's activities, right? So let's say Anna has vetoed dinner. If Anna has vetoed dinner and then Bob has vetoed something, then Bob would have vetoed one of Anna's activities. Right? Either play or the movie. So let's say play. Right? Now, what happens if neither of their acceptable activities match? They select Bob's acceptable activity, either one of these, dinner or dancing, that is not vetoed by Anna. So Anna would have vetoed one of these two, dinner or dancing here. Let's say she has vetoed dinner. Then what will be acceptable? Then dancing will be acceptable. Then they'll go with this. So if zero activities match, then Bob's acceptable activity that is not vetoed, right? That will be taken. So these are the three rules, all right? Now, uh, did they go dancing today? So our question is whether they went dancing today. My first statement, neither of their acceptable activities matched today. So then the situation is something like this. Neither of the activities matched today. So neither person had vetoed dancing. So neither person had vetoed dancing. Great, then it is possible that they went for dancing, right? But there neither of their acceptable activities match. So we are going to use this rule, right? Neither than this rule that Bob's activity, which is not vetoed, that is going to be chosen. Now, now here is the uh, flip thing. It, this is possible that A, Anna chose play movie and you know dinner and Bob chose dinner dancing and then vetoed play. But it is also possible that this is B's uh, list and this is A's list, right? We just wrote this, you know, we just wrote whatever came to our mind. This was very ad hoc, isn't it? It is possible that Bob had chosen play and movie and had vetoed dinner, whereas Anna had chosen dinner and dancing and had vetoed play. Do you understand that it is, we, you know, we select the activity that was on Bob's list, but we don't know which is Bob's list, right? We don't know whether dancing was there on Bob's list or not. We know that their movies were different, that their uh, lists were different, acceptable activities were different. But did Bob had, have dancing in his list or did Anna have dancing in her list? We don't know. 
right? And Bob says activity is the one that is going to get selected. And that is the reason why this statement alone is not sufficient. Make sense? Right? This is not sufficient. Look at statement two. Anna had dancing as an acceptable activity today, but Bob did not. Okay, so the first thing that probably comes to your mind is that, uh, you know, brilliant, like both of them together are acceptable for sure now, right? Because I know that Anna had dancing, Bob did not have, we had to choose Bob's activity. And that is, a, I can say for sure that they did not go dancing, okay? But then if I use both the statements together, do keep in mind that this has become extremely simple. It has become you know, obvious, right? There, this is what the trap of the question is. So the answer is not C over here. Now let's look at B properly first. Forget A, forget statement one. Anna had dancing as an acceptable activity today. So Anna's list had dancing, whereas Bob's list did not have dancing. I'm not given about their activities being all different here. Huh? Keep in mind that. So there was no dancing over here, yeah? And I know dancing was over here. All, all right, so then, you know, this rule is certainly not applicable. Both the activities don't match because Bob doesn't have dancing. It is possible that one activity matches. Now, since Bob does not have dancing, but Anna does, the matching activity cannot be dancing. So then it is possible that something else, you know, they went for something else. Right? If, the, if one of their activities does match, that will not be dancing. So they definitely, in that case, they did not go dancing. What if none of their activities matched? What if, you know, Anna had dancing and let's say had dinner or play or movie, doesn't matter. And Bob had play or movie. Bob did not have dancing for sure, I know. If none of their activities matched, the activity to be done will be chosen from whose list? From Bob's list. Right? And Bob does not have dancing as an acceptable activity. So then I can say for sure that even in this case, they would not have gone dancing, even if nothing matched. If only one thing matched, then definitely they did not go dancing because dancing did not match. We are given that Bob did not have dancing. And if nothing matched, even then it cannot be dancing because Bob did not have dancing on his list and his list is the one which is going to have that activity that they'll actually do because Anna's list has dancing, right? When we use this rule, again, we see that dancing will not be acceptable today. So for sure, we can say that they did not go dancing today. My answer is a definite no. And that is why this statement alone is sufficient. And my answer here is going to be B. Right? So ensure that you look at each statement alone. If, and it is especially true in these kind of questions, in case it seems to be too easy if you put both the statements together, please do take a look at each individually. Look at them enough. Yeah? Look at them. Try Even if you need to hide your statement one and just look at two so that you forget everything that is given to you in statement one, do that. Right?